Ujine is here with stories trending around the world. Audio. Hello, G. <laughs> Good morning, Doctor. About to guess what? We are what? matching today. Oh, okay. Ah, you see, you telepathy. Are. Yes. You are. How are you? Yeah. Okay, you're smiling. Good. <laughs> Good, Good morning, morning Tunde. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Okay. Good morning, Rafai. How are you? Hi, Oji. I mean, uh, you, you and Dr. Abati, both of you sent the memo on time today. We did. 6 a.m. Yeah. this morning. Yeah, yeah. Both of you are just glowing. <laughs> you are too. Uh, uh, glowing, glowing people. You God look great, you Rafai. Both. Good morning. You too. Good morning. Yeah. Well, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, Michael Collins, the NASA astronaut, who was the command module pilot for the Apollo 11 mission to the moon, dies at age 90 after battling cancer. And President Joe Biden evokes his late son, Bo, who died of brain cancer in 2015. During his first national address to Congress on Wednesday, the president called on the National Institute of Health to focus on developing breakthroughs to prevent and treat diseases like cancer. So let's end cancer as we know it. It's within our power. It's within our power to do it. In Australia, Simon Durant today, 55-year-old who claimed to be the secret son of Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, has shared even more telling photos in his fight to prove his identity as he prepares to file a case at the Australian High Court. In Egypt, archaeologists working on the Nile Delta have uncovered dozens of rare pre-dynastic tombs dating to the period before Egypt's pharaonic kingdoms first emerged more than 5,000 years ago. In Indonesia, a heartbreaking video released by the military shows the crew of the doomed Indonesian military submarine singing on board just weeks before the craft sank, killing 53 sailors. <laughs> In Nigeria, an initiative to showcase and celebrate Lagos State, Echo for Show, has been launched by Google Arts and Culture. The online exhibition will profile over 100 creatives across the spectrum of music, art, photography, fashion, food, and literature. Under sports, 20 times Grand Slam champion Roger Federer is set to auction off his Grand Slam memorabilia at Christie's valued at £1 million. The proceeds will go to the Federal Foundation, which delivers educational resources to children in Africa and Switzerland. Finally, under entertainment, British Nigerian actor John Boyega has been nominated Best Leading Actor at the BAFTA's Television Awards for his role in Small Acts. Don't you think it's time things were different? As individuals, we have an impossible battle. Collective, we stand a chance. Well, let's begin what's trending in Nigeria. A group, Forum of Bishops and Clergy Council Society of Nigeria, on Tuesday, held a solidarity and peace rally in support of Nigeria's Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, who has been criticized by Nigerians for past comments which expressed support for Al Qaeda and the Taliban. The members of the group were seen holding a banner which read Solidarity and Peace Rally in support of President Buhari ICT reforms. Vote of confidence on Dr. Isa Pantami, Honorable Minister of Communication. Well, some women were also seen carrying placards with inscriptions on them, such as Continue with your good work, Mr. President. Nigeria first. Dr. Isa Pantami is not a terrorist sympathizer. While well, the pictures have generated mixed reactions on Twitter, as many believe the protesters were hired. Let's take a tweet from China, who wrote, I don't know what's going on here, but these men are no clergymen from the look of things. Who even writes scripts for these government and all their affiliates? Rufai, I'm coming to you with this story. Wow. Apparently, this group has no <laughs> online presence which clearly indicates that it is a new group. It is quite appalling to even know that if this is, you know, a hired crowd, wow. they're playing with religion. It really is sad. I mean, if the minister is not a terrorist sympathizer, who is? I mean, it's obvious. You know what ju ju this just shows me? There are lots of people that are idle in this country. They don't have work. It's obvious. And that's why you can rent a crowd, put up a, a, them in bishop's attire, 
and told them to go protest. Forum of Bishops and Clergy Council of Nigeria. You know this is all a charade. You see, when are, we, when are we going to stop deceiving ourselves in this country? This is just personal deceit on another level. <laughs> Look at that one's neck that calls him a bishop. <laughs> Please, let's not mitigate issues. This has nuisance value, but let's not mitigate issues. These are, these are very, very important issues. And for the fact that we are even doing this, I'm not saying people don't have a right of defense, but when you want to defend, defend with facts. This is a man that has come out to say, I said that before, but I renounced that. The question should be a question of morality. Does he have the justification to stay in there? We all know the answer to that. For the fact that this is even dividing us, it's polarizing those it wants to polarize, not me anyway, is an indication of the fact that we've lost it. We've lost the moral fiber of a nation. Dwight Eisenhower says, a nation that values privilege over virtue and purpose will soon lose the privilege and the virtue and the purpose. That's what we're coming as a nation. Something was said. At first, you denied it. Then when the pressure was much, you came out to allude to the fact that you said it when you were younger. Then you said you were in your 20s. It has been found that you were in your 30s when you said it. Instead of you to take the moral high ground, then what do we have? A campaign. And the campaign starts. And now we have to go to the extent of renting people to wear bishops' uniforms, to say bishops are in support. Unbelievable, Dr. Abati. And if, if these people have money to dole around, they should go and bribe Khan now to come and support him on based on this issue. That's the Christian religion of Nigeria we know. They should go and bribe Khan if the money is so much. Exactly. They should go and bribe Khan so that we know. What's you, happening? You can see even these women here are saying, thank you, Mr. President, for not yielding to blackmail. Dr. Abati, I mean... <clears throat> well, the other time when we discuss, uh, you know, the politics around the continued stay in office of the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, I made a point that in terms of response, I didn't think that the minister was handling the situation well. He had already used, uh, issued a statement in which uh, he more or less recanted, apologized for whatever he said in the past, and the public responded. And I complained at the time that I noticed that, you know, whether it was the one behind it or someone else, was recruiting people I refer to as a bunch of nitwits, you know, trying to defend him on uh, uh, social media. Yeah, Twitter, yeah. And because of what they were saying, I thought, you know, most of that was unintelligent. But I saw some reactions later. Some people say, oh, you know, uh, Dr. Abati uh, uh, does not respect our right to free speech. Yes, free speech is, is useful. It's in the Constitution. It's well stated there. The right to freedom of expression is Section 39. But there, there is a way in which you can exercise your right of free speech. And you appear very foolish and stupid. You know? And I think that, in part, that is what we're dealing with here. In politics, this is called the rented crowd uh, politics. Uh, you know, a special purpose vehicle kind of uh, politicking. Uh, some people want to be a very local. They call it Belefis Front. <laughs> so because of the poverty and the ignorance in the land, you can just go to any bus stop and recruit people, give them placards, and ask them to pursue any kind of uh, agenda. And that's what you'll find in a country where, you know, there's a lot of ignorance, there's a lot of uh, depression, there's a lot of frustration. You, it's not just people are, are recruited and you give them guns to go and kill. Some of them, you give them placards and they can commit, you know, atrocities with it. You see that many of those women, uh, <clears throat> why I say it's Belefi's front, is that you know, some of them, they are aware that what they are doing uh, doesn't yeah, quite make sense. So they are covering, their, face, covering their faces yeah. with placards. And this is not the first time we we'll see this. Recently in London, uh, when some people went to defend uh, President Buhari's uh, presence uh, in Nigeria House, some of the people who went there who were pro-government, they were covering their faces with a mask. They turned the mask into a complete uh, masquerade attire. <laughs> they were not covering those. They were even covering their eyes. Some of them were covering their faces with uh, And it became an issue for, uh, uh, what's his name now? Um, uh, this is my colleague. Reno? I'm Reno Who pointed it out and said, if these people have the strength of their conviction, then they will not be cov covering their faces. But because they are beleferous from their politicians, <laughs> you know, they, they, they cannot expose their faces. So this is what happens. And I think it's uh, most unfortunate that there are many Nigerians that are at that level 
that will defend anything. But that's for Minister Issa Pantami. Well, he's protected by the fact that the presidency has thrown its weight uh, behind them. And uh, the presidency has also made it clear that people serve at the pleasure of the president because the president under the constitution uh, has the power to hire and fire. He can choose his team. He has those powers under section five of the, uh, of the constitution and other sections that give him the executive powers to choose his own team. Right, well so said. as far as the presidency is concerned, that aspect of it is covered. But Nigerians can express their opinions and say, well, we think that, uh, you know, he doesn't deserve to be forgiven. He doesn't deserve the, uh, the apology that he has given. They do not trust him. But that's another position entirely, in my right. opinion. Dundu, your take on the story. How I wish the presidency would defend Nigeria with the same passion that they used to defend. I mean, that is a valid point. Wouldn't that be defend great? Defend Nigeria with <laughs> that, that passion. Be yes. With that statement, oh my goodness. But what strikes me with the story that you shared, I'm sorry I'm smiling because I'm trying not to laugh, is the striking uniformity of those placards. They came from the same place. We've all seen demonstrations like NSARS that were spontaneous, that were genuine. Everybody will write their own placard. This is obviously a rent a crowd, print a placard situation. And the fact that women are included is also quite telling. You will recall that Dr. Pantami got into some kind of a face-off with Honorable Abika Dabiri, and she accused him of being misogynistic. So there they are rolling out the women oh, to wow. show that women are also in support of Pantami. And the Christian Association of Nigeria did weigh in, but they did so with integrity. They weighed in to the extent to corroborate um, JNI, saying that those minutes were, that document was fake, and they left it at that. And that is exactly how they ought to have handled it. Very well said, Tundu. We're going to go on a short break now. And when we come back, What's Trending on the Morning Show will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Morning Show. We're still on What's Trending. Vice President Yemi Osibajo has again reacted to the security situation in the nation as it pertains to the Southeast. While speaking with the All Progressives Congress leaders from the Southeast on Tuesday, the Vice President said Nigeria cannot afford another civil war and called on the political elite of the nation to speak truth to power and to rise up against forces of division in order to preserve the unity of the country. Tundu, I'm coming straight to you on this story. It's great that um, the Vice President is continuing to speak up, you know, against insecurity and advising um, the political elite. But you know, I don't know how, you know, the political elite coming forward to speak truth to power can prevent mayhem that is happening in our country. Only two days ago or yesterday, there was that viral video of 19 herdsmen slaughtered in Anambra. I mean, I don't know if, you know, just speaking truth to power is going to stop the security issues. I think that they should continue to sit together in meetings and talk about how to deal with this strategically instead of, you know, blaming the political elite for not speaking truth to power. Well, I like the fact that you have a solution. Yeah. Too often people have criticisms without yeah. solutions. So kudos to you, OG, yes. for that. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> but, that but it depends on what you think he means. He might know something that we don't. He might know who he's asking to speak to whom and not getting into the details. Because you will recall there have been several accusations that those behind our insecurity issues are known and they are political elites. So maybe those are the people that he's hoping that their peers will speak to them. You never know what he knows that he's not sharing. But I do ad appreciate what he said. Mm. Same, and he gave an example of a man that he knew personally in Somalia who yes. was a judge and he went and he saw the man queuing for food. He's giving that illustration. And I also agreed when Alajilai Mohammed said the same thing about the elite rabble rousing. I think they know a lot more than they're saying. But I do have to say, while the elites have a role to play, the political elites, they have a role to play, the federal government has a role to play. Section 15, subsection 4 of the Constitution, it is up to the federal government of Nigeria Correct. to create an enabling environment for all Nigerians, where we all feel at home, where we all feel that we have ownership in this country. It is them that are to create that, not us. But I do appreciate those comments. Well, I mean, if you look at it in terms of his position, uh, uh, Vice President uh, Oshimbajo was speaking from a position of leadership. Nobody should expect that uh, a man who is number two in the country will make any statement to the contrary. 
because there is the, their job, his job and the president's job, is certainly not to come and preside over the disintegration of Nigeria. Now, he made the point about war not being desirable, whether it's the uh, first civil war or the second civil war, war of any type, you know, has a very uh, uh, tragic uh, consequences. And we experienced that during the, uh, first, the civil war of 1967 to 70. And his main point is that if there is war in Nigeria, all of us will be affected. It's not just the elite, even the followers, all of us. Well, so that's the obvious it truth. Is, it is in our strategic is interest to promote peace. Yeah. Now, when he talked about the elite, he's talking about the leadership, that leadership should be provided. One of the major fault lines in this country is that we don't have an elite consensus. We can't put our finger on it. That is the elite consensus in Nigeria as to how this country can move forward. You have an elite class uh, that is a prebendal class, uh, a prebendal elite, that is only interested in, in its own alim alimentary interests. In other words, his stomach. You know, what will enter the stomach, uh, stomach infrastructure. Mm. That's a commitment. Now, no country moves forward on that basis. But the vice president has identified the importance of that elite consensus, but the responsibility should start also at the level of leadership within government. Correct. What is government doing? Because Nigeria is already in a state of war with regard to poverty, with regard to insecurity. There may not be an open war there, but it's, it's a state of war, a yes. state of anomaly, a state of anarchy. Correct. And perhaps, you know, government at all levels can provide leadership in that regard. He mentioned the, uh, the Supreme Court justice that he saw in Somalia who was carrying a bull begging for food. Well, I mean, I think there is a Nostradamic uh, temper that is abroad now in, uh, in Abuja, in the government corridors. The other day, it was uh, Alajilai Mohammed who said that the uh, educated people, uh, the elite PhD that may go to Togo mm. to become yes. uh, bricklayers. So this you time around, like so professor. if these are real Nostradamic uh, you know, <laughs> illuminations, <laughs> then of course the people who have elected into office should do what they can to prevent it. All right, Rafai, before I come to you, we'll take our final story. Mary Daniel, an amputee hawker, who went viral after her pictures hawking on the streets of Lagos circulated online, which prompted some Nigerians to raise over 25 million naira after Mary persuaded them to believe that she was an orphan. Well, as it turns out, her story was false. Mary had claimed that she lost a leg in an accident that killed all passengers, including her parents, when she was a teenager. The Lagos state government, who also came to her aid last Thursday, discovered that contrary to her claims, her father is still alive and she was amputated from birth. Mary has since been handed over to social welfare officials for further investigation. Rufai, your take on this story. Uh, Mary had no business lying in the first place. That's wrong. Uh, people could have still do what they, or whatever they wanted to do for her when she shared that story and put it on social media. Uh, she had no business lying in the first place. But for me, the twist is the money. I don't know why anything, anytime money gets involved in anything in this country, people change. If you want to know the true character of a man, put money on the table, you will know him. Character change. Cost 25 million naira now is the bone of contention. So it's not about Mary's predicament any longer. It's the 25 million naira. And there are many forces that want to share the money. There are some people that have been calling Mary on the phone, threatening her. We'll do this to you, we'll do that to you because of the money, because of their own share of the money. And it's so sad the way the country has become. So it's no longer about Mary's predicament. I have no problems with people giving out to Mary. Mary shouldn't have lied in the should have not lied, should have told the truth in the first place. But it speaks to what society has become. Correct. The love for money, the fact that we want to grab money and all of that, the insincerity in society, the fact that you know when you put someone's story like that on social media, some people will be compelled to dole out money because everything was calculated and planned one way or the other. And it goes back to those values in society we preach against, the fact that we want to grab everything that belongs to us. Uh, Lagos, they say they are protecting her. Yes, the protection should continue because I tell you what, Mary's life is not safe. Anybody can be killed for money. 25 million naira is a lot of money in this country where people can't afford to eat three square meals a day. Mm. When close to 100 million people can't afford to live on 700 naira a day. So 25 million is big money. And yes. Mary's life is in danger. And it just goes back to feed into why we keep talking about development and the likes. Concerning speaking truth to power, did it smart that they hear me speak truth to power before some people call him PDP member? You see, what annoys me in this country is the hypocrisy. We act as though we don't know the problems. We become and we call ourselves political elites. 
But we'll go to the back and we'll talk otherwise. You speak truth to power in this country, they call you wailing whalers. Now you're saying speak truth to the power. I'm scared to speak truth to power because you'll call me a wailing whaler tomorrow. You see, until we start to think of the interest of Nigeria, not the interest of our pocket, this country can never move forward. And the sad reality is there are too many people thinking of the interest on their pocket over Nigeria. And the shocking thing is that these people are the quicker to sing national anthem in public events. It's only about their pockets, not the country. They are the quickest to read the national pledge. And I ask, do they really understand what the national pledge means? They swore to defend the constitution, but they can cherry pick the constitution if it favors them. Just like governors now don't want to pay judicial workers. They are going to daddy. They we can't pay judicial workers, judicial workers are on a strike. But it's these same governors that will come at the back and say, oh, state autonomy. Give us our resource and all of that. Oh, so you can see the hypocrisy. I think the number one problem in this country, apart from insecurity, is hypocrisy across every political class in this country. And until we start to tell ourselves the truth, we will not go anywhere. What is source for the goose is not source for always source for the Ganda in this country. All right, you're fine. Speaking of speaking truth to power, Smart Adeyemi has led the way. I thought some other senators would support him. But what did they tell him? Ah, you are a PDP member. Don't speak like opposition. Nigeria is born and people are still playing partisan politics. <laughs> Horrible. Andrew, your comment on Mary's hey. story. I think the best place for Mary is where she is now. She's not safe. I actually mm. feel so sorry for her. That was a massive miscalculation, her decision to lie. It was completely pointless. And I'm sure now she completely regrets it. I'm sure it. she didn't do it by herself, though. Well, I'm sure she regrets awful, it. This yeah. is an absolute disaster. It's it just complicated her life needlessly. And it's made it that much harder for other people with genuine claims to get the generosity from Nigerians that she got. So right. It's just sad all around. Okay, OG, I think we'll leave it there. But uh, the uh, Commissioner of Information of Lagos State was on radio this morning to assure everyone that the Lagos State government is not holding on to that yes, to the five million naira and that they will provide, you know, uh, security and support for her. Thank you. But this tomorrow. is all about greed and why honesty is important. Very good.